it is approximately 8.20 a.m. on Monday, July the 27th. It has been a really long time since I've filmed. I had to take a break because I was sick <laughs> on and off, but I'm actually still sick right now, but I'm sick with something completely different. So <laughs> I... I don't have a low immune system, I found, but apparently the doctor says that my body just likes to get sick. Even though I take vitamins every single day, I'm like on a B12 complex vitamin, I take vitamin C, I take zinc, I take magnesium, I take potassium, I take ox bile, I take like one a day or like it's a prenatal vitamin, I take, what else do I take? Uh... I don't know. I'm about to start uh, taking collagen peptides and I think that's it. And then just like my daily medication. So I'm like, I take a lot, you know, but I just still get sick. So anyways, I've been talking about like getting healthy for a really long time. And there's many reasons why. I mean, like, obviously I'm like, I have high blood pressure, which runs in my family. I developed it like maybe like a couple of years ago. So I'm on medication for that, which is not ideal. And I'm also pre-diabetic, which is terrible and not good because my mom's diabetic. And so is my sister, Jeanette, who's the youngest one. And they're both on insulin, which isn't great. So I have high risk, right? So I know I need to get healthy. I've been wanting to I was on keto for like a, a month and I lost about 20 pounds and then I was like oh like I'll take like a week off and then I went off the rails and then I never went back on it so I'm gonna go back on it <laughs> and I've been walking with my sister about like three miles every other day today we're walking in the evening so we're doing three miles then I can't do it every day because I've been injured back I think you guys remember that so it just it takes a toll on my lower back but if I do it every other day, it's totally fine. So yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh myself and then I'm basically just gonna talk about my reintroduction to keto because it's been a couple of months. I did it in May, so now it's July. Uh, reintroduction to keto. I'm actually starting off with a fat fast. So these might be two different videos, but I'll mention it here. So I'm starting with a fat fast and then I'm gonna start regular keto after five days because they recommend to do it three to five days or more than that. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm about to go weigh myself and then I'm about to have some coffee with some heavy cream which doesn't break a fast and i'm fasting oh my god my voice is changing as i'm doing this i'm so gonna get sick yeah so coffee and all that stuff so you guys will see the scale right now and then you'll see my coffee and yeah let's go from there okay hopefully you guys join me on this journey and if not then i'll see you in my like budgeting stuff Okay guys, so just kidding, no scale. I totally forgot to actually video the scale, but I did have my app for the scale that I use and I was at 208.60 and as you can see, it gives you my BMI, my body fat, my fat-free body weight, my subcutaneous fat, my visceral fat, my body water, my skeletal muscle, my muscle mass, all that jazz. It also gives you trends, like it's the scale that I use and I think you saw me unbox it and show it it's like the v fit scale i believe so it just really shows you like all of the trends that you go through if you take your weight you know often enough and it'll just go through each and single one through your weight through your you know body mass through your skeletal muscles your body fat bmi and all that jazz so it's a really really great scale i really really like it it's called the v sync fit scale and i would highly recommend it to anyone who wants to start a weight loss journey and wants to really Really see the differences in each you know in each subcategory other than your weight so yeah that's where it's at guys oh my gosh look at that my protein what is that my metabolic age my metabolic age is like 47 that's crazy I don't even know what that means I have to look that up okay I'm back so coffee is made it's just basically 12 ounces of black coffee and two tablespoons of heavy cream um, which doesn't break your keto fast unless you add some sort of sweetener or at least it doesn't for some people I think you have to take your own numbers to see if it spikes up any of um, your levels But not for me So I'm allowed to have this with heavy cream and not break my fast until two o'clock So that's one of the things that I'm doing. I've been doing intermittent fasting without really trying uh, I was trying before in May. I was really focused on that intermittent fasting and keto and then when I went back to 
to just like eating junk. I wasn't so much super focused on it, but it was still happening because, you know, I was waking up later than usual. I'm hoping to get back on my schedule. I stopped for a minute, but I was also sick for so long that it's kind of understandable. So yeah, so I'm gonna have my coffee. I'm gonna drink my water. I will check in with you guys later because it's going really, really long. <laughs> Okay guys, so I am back after running a bunch of errands. So, and that took a minute. So it is currently three o'clock in the afternoon. I still haven't had my first meal. I am intermittent fasting, so it's fine, but I am starting to feel a little hungry. So far I've only had 32 ounces of water. I'm gonna have some more for sure. So right now you're just gonna watch me prep my beef with butter because I'm doing the beef and butter fast for five days and you'll get to see what I'm using and all that jazz. Okay. Hey guys, so I'm back. I'm about to prep my stuff for the beef that I'm making. Since I'm doing the beef and butter fast for the next five days, I went ahead and got some Kerrygold butter, which I always get anyways because, you know, on keto, that's the one that you do. I mean, you can get a cheaper version of it, but I just really like the Kerrygold version of it. And sometimes, uh, if you don't check the ingredients or even the carb content, some of the ones that are cheaper than this do have carbs, and this one has zero uh, carbs in it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no carbs whatsoever. So Kerrygold butter butter is always great for keto. I'm also going to add some garlic and some onions. I've seen people do it and I've seen other people that don't. I need some flavor in my so I am going to add this and I'm also going to add some chili pepper, some pepper, and some pink Himalayan salt into my meat. So basically right now you're just going to watch me prep. I'm not a big cook so don't judge my cutting skills. Okay, there's my onion. I'm satisfied with those slices. I'm a big garlic head, so I do tend to use a lot of garlic. So let me see how many cloves I end up putting in this, because I also, I'm super hungry, <laughs> so I don't want to take up too much time trying to like chop these up. Okay, I think that's good with those. So I'm just gonna chop this pretty haphazardly as I don't mind chunks of garlic in my food. There's this place in LA that was one of my favorite places to go to anytime we're celebrating anything or just in general called the stinking rose because everything is smothered in garlic, made in garlic, whatever. So, so good. I'm a garlic, garlic person. That's what I like. Stay away from me because I've probably got garlic breath all the time even on set too. Although I try to be mindful whenever I have like a kissing scene or anything like that, just because, you know, just being courteous. Okay, so this is done. We're gonna bring this and this over to the other side and then you'll see me in a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on medium and I'm gonna cut up four tablespoons of this. I saw someone do half of this, but they were doing three pounds. I'm just gonna do four. Not in the straightest line, guys, but it will do. There we go. Toss that in there. Okay, so just spread this little puppy out. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw in my garlic and my onions because I want them to start giving that flavor that they give. So there we go. And I'm basically going to keep this until the garlic is a little browned and until the onions are translucent. Okay, so I'm just gonna toss this in here. Now mind you, there's still the fat in this meat as well, along with the butter. And this is 23% lean, 27% fat. I think this is gonna be too small of a skillet. So salt is for your own taste. I definitely put a lot of salt in mine because I know that I'm gonna need it because I do tend to get really bad leg cramps while I'm doing keto. I don't necessarily get the keto flu, but I definitely get the leg cramps. And let me tell you, having to fall down in the Upper West Side in the middle of a bodega 
during August is not fun. And then having to have like this stock guy come and like just take charge and massage your leg as like these Charlie horses are rolling up and down your leg. And like I'm screaming in pain and crying and they're giving me like coconut water and putting magnesium oil on my leg. That was not fun. So I don't want to do that again. So I'm definitely gonna make sure that I'm consuming enough enough, enough magnesium, enough potassium, enough of my, you know, just the supplements that I need. Okay, and then let's add some chili, just because I like a little spice in my life. For good measure, I'm gonna add some more salt, I know, but just for good measure, because again, don't want to have those cramps in my legs, because they happen in the middle of the night too. Like I can't tell you how many times I woke up while I was doing keto and like was screaming in pain and telling my husband, oh my God, help me. And he didn't know what to do at times. So he just like massaged them and they're painful. And I know not everybody experiences those because they're used, taking their supplements and stuff, but I really did experience them and yeah, it's not, not fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this cook and then I'll check in with you guys in it. But that's what it looks like. It has a lot of like juice left, which I was not expecting, but it does have the four tablespoons of butter in there, plus the fat that the ground beef naturally produces because it has a lot of fat. So yeah, I'm gonna let this cool off a bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and serve it to myself because I am hungry. Okay guys, so there you have it. Nothing fancy. I just put it in a bowl. This is nine ounces of ground beef. I don't even know that I'm gonna be able to finish that, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. And I have my 24 ounces of water and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my LaCroix because I need something fizzy. Okay guys, so it's gonna be my first time tasting this. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be bad or anything, but I figured I'd try it on camera because this is gonna be <laughs> my meal for the next five days. Like legit, every lunch and dinner is gonna be this for the next five days. I mean, you could do it for three days, but because I really fell off the wagon with keto, like in June, I'm just like, I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna be hardcore about it. So yeah, I'm gonna do it for five days and then I can go back to like regular keto stuff. But yes, yeah, so this is gonna be my food for the next few days. I am allowing myself a LaCroix because I figured that it wouldn't interfere with this since it has no sodium, no carb, no protein, no sugar, no nothing. So um, it's just a little fizziness for myself as opposed to doing like dirty keto when I have Coke Zero. Okay, moment of truth guys. Let me see if I'm a good cook. Mm. It's good. Mm. It's really good. I can see myself getting tired of it fairly quickly, but it's only five days. So yeah, okay. I like it. It's a win. So yeah, I'm gonna finish this and then I'll check in with you guys over dinner, <laughs> see if I'm still liking it. And I'm also gonna go for a walk with my sister once the sun starts going down, cause it's really hot right now and I'm still sick. Anyways, wish me luck and I will see you guys later. Okay, I totally forgot to vlog a little bit before I left the house. I'm already at over a mile near the trail by my house and I'm trying to be evening because I'm walking by myself and I don't want to be out in the dark. But um, yeah, it's 8.30 right now. So let's see if I can make it through this whole trail without running it. <gasps> Okay, so I totally miscalculated when it was gonna get dark. <laughs> so it's starting to get a little dark. I literally just walked through an area that was the back trail. It was kind of creepy because it was just me and like maybe a few other people. And then my husband called me concerned of where it was, but I am almost to the street that leads me home. So I wish me luck. <laughs> Okay guys, so it is officially 11 on Monday, July 27th, and I am done for the day. I had my second meal of like beef and butter and it was fine, it didn't taste bad. It wasn't horrible and I'm super full and I ended up at 1,650 calories. So not the 1,800 that I was intending to do, but super good and one net carb, I think. Oh, you know what, I actually should put I'm actually gonna enter the onion and garlic and I think I'll end up at two net carbs maybe. But anyway, so yeah, so it's a good day. I, I'm still sick, but I don't feel like, you know, super out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures and some measurements right now so that I can have them for, you know, my progress and stuff. And then I'm gonna take my evening medication and uh, probably go to bed. Well, take a shower, go to bed. We'll see you guys tomorrow.
Good morning guys, or should I say good afternoon? I am getting a super late start today, so <laughs> I'm like rushing to get everything done. So I'm just having my cup of coffee with two tablespoons of heavy cream, and then I have to eat my lunch, and, uh, and then I'm gonna try to walk a mile on the treadmill, because I'm doing three miles Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, because I don't want to overwhelm my body, especially because I haven't had, I've been pretty sedentary, and I don't want to overwhelm my body. I tried doing it like a week or two ago where I was going every day and by the third day I burned out. My body was in so much pain and I have a lower back injury so it's not awesome like last night I had to put some of that icy hot lidocaine on my lower back. Um, so I'm gonna do three miles Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and then a mile Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at the at the gym here in our complex. So it could give me 15 miles of walking weekly and then I'm doing my intermittent fasting and right now I'm doing my fat fast but then I'm transferring into my regular keto eating on Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Oh, and I got some stuff that I'm going to open up. I'll unbox on uh, maybe like later today. I'll unbox it from like the Thin Foods, which is very, very keto friendly. I'm not eating them until Saturday. Saturday, I can start eating them. But I was really, really excited. So, um, y'all, I'll show you guys that. So, anyways, I'm going to stop rambling because I ramble. If you guys have seen this channel before, I love to hear myself talk. Yeah. Okay. I'll check it with you guys later when I'm eating. Okay, guys. So, I am done eating. It wasn't bad. Like, tasted great. <laughs> I'm not hating it, but I'm a big carnivore and I do like meat and I, of course, I love butter. So it's not like terrible, but my stomach did hurt after. But I know it's because I have a, along with my gluten intolerance, and I still eat bread. Well, I mean, not now, but I was eating bread. I also have a dairy intolerance, but like cheese and like heavy cream and stuff like that is not something that I. I'm ever probably gonna stop eating. So it comes with the territory. So I did get a stomach ache and I uh, had to go to the bathroom, uh, TMI. But yeah, I mean, like I'm fine now. So I mean, but it tasted great. It was filling and I had less than I was supposed to have and it was still very filling. So I feel good. I feel good so far. Okay, I'll check in with you guys later. Okay, so I'm in my workout gear because I'm gonna go walk a mile after I'm done eating dinner. Everybody else is eating dinner except for my husband. He hasn't eaten dinner, he just got back home. But the doggies are eating. So you can see there's Pebbles and Bam Bam is over there. So I just made some more ground beef. I actually added some jalapenos in it because I like it a little spicy. And then I'm gonna be drinking one of my crystal geysers that I just got and some water. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys after I'm done eating this and when I'm on my way to walk a mile, okay. Okay, so I just realized that I didn't check in with you guys after I walked a mile or while I was walking a mile. I was supposed to go to hit the treadmill, but it was closed or the gym was closed, so I couldn't do the treadmill. So then I just sort of aimlessly walked around my building in order to do one mile. But anyways, I have a great picture of it, which I will insert like now. So you see, I was really sweaty. So yeah, so it was good. I feel good. It's already 11.19. Gonna go to bed soon-ish. Okay, I will check in with you guys tomorrow morning. Good night. Hey guys, and I am back. I actually didn't film this morning because I totally forgot, honestly, but um, I just did my coffee, six, uh, 12 ounces of coffee with two tablespoons of heavy cream, and that was just basically it, and then I was editing all morning. I woke up, I had set my alarm for 10 o'clock because I had my uh, couples counseling with my husband at 11, and I woke up like at 8.25, like just like wide-eyed, I was just like done, I was like, I had to get up, so I got up and I mean, I didn't go to bed that early. I went to bed probably around like, I want to say like two or three in the morning, but I just woke up. And like, that is one of the things that happens on keto that I've noticed is that I just wake up early and I wake up with a lot of energy. I know some people tend to get the keto flu. I think luckily I've been supplementing myself enough with like magnesium and potassium and like the salt that I put in my stuff that um, so far I haven't felt that. Now I just have a bunch of energy. I had my coffee, did an hour of editing, walked my dogs, then had my session with our therapist. Then I walked the dogs again and now I just 
just warmed up my meal, which again is my beef and butter meal. And then I have some water. And today I'm going for LaCroix because I'm gonna finish all my LaCroix first before I dig into all of my crystal geysers, which are my favorite. And uh, yeah, so like, let me eat this and see if I'm feeling ugh, icky about it or not. And I have to take a bunch of my vitamins because I don't like to take a bunch of my vitamins on an empty stomach or just like on coffee because then it hurts my stomach. So I'm gonna do this and then I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Today I'm actually gonna walk three miles. I'm hoping that my sister will get back from Laredo in order to do it with me. If not, I'm taking off at 7.30 by myself and hopefully will not be caught in the dark again. I will check in with you guys in a bit. I forgot to mention that today is Wednesday, July the 29th. You guys, so far, this is still pretty bomb. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not hurting it. Anyways, I'm gonna finish eating and I'll shut up now. Bye. Okay guys, hi. So I'm about to do my evening walk three miles. I'm on my way to go get my sister so that she can walk with me so I won't be walking alone. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys once I get over there. Oh my gosh, you love that mattress right there? Anyone want it? Okay, so our walks. <laughs> Rattlesnake. <laughs> we think it's dead, but it's sort of moving. So we're keeping our distance. Go. Holy crap. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Okay, so we just had an encounter with a rattlesnake, a dead one, but it was still moving, so we're a little freaked out. Jeanette, how was your first encounter? Scary. <laughs> we'll check in with you later, guys. Okay, so we're two miles in. My sister's creeped out by this area. She's been jumpy throughout the whole walk, pretty much right after the rattlesnake. But anyways, doing good, doing good, feeling good. I wonder what makes that sound. <laughs> Running across the street, it's baby was somewhere over there. This is why it's a little creepy walking at night. <laughs> okay, so I just got in from my hike. I'm about to have my dinner, which is nine and a half ounces of beef and butter, LaCroix, and 24 ounces of water. I've been really focusing on drinking a lot of water because I'm very, very bad at it. So just trying to get used to it. So the hike, not the hike, but the walk was really good. You know, I got a little bit of a workout for sure. And uh, now I'm gonna eat and then I'll check in with you guys in a little bit after I'm done and see if I'm still liking this and show you my vitamins because I want you to see what I have to take every day. Okay, I'll check in with you guys in a bit. So I just wanted to update you. I've showered and I had my dinner and it was good. It didn't feel monotonous. I didn't feel grossed out or anything by it. It was very filling and I wanted to show you my vitamins of why I think my stomach is hurting. So I'm trying to figure out a way to help my stomach not hurt so much because I am taking a lot. So I'm going to turn this around and then show you that. Okay, so this is what my morning looks like. So prenatal, prenatal, super B complex. This is turmeric. This is, this is high blood pressure. Allergy, allergy, allergy. Oh no, that's actually antibiotic. Then we have steroid and then some collagen, some ox bile, some zinc, some potassium and a probiotic. So that is my AM. This one I have to take two hours before dairy and two or two hours after dairy. So once I have my coffee, I have to wait two hours before I have it, but then I have to wait two hours before I have my meal. So yeah, and then let me show you my evening ones. Okay, here are my evening ones. So this is my lithium. I take 900 milligrams a night. That's my colonopin. I take 0.5 milligrams to help me sleep and just to calm my brain down. This is the magnesium that I take and I take that at night so that it can help me with my muscle cramps overnight and then I can just have that energy in the morning. That's more ox bile. This is the... Uh, not the steroid, the other one was the steroid. The little one was the steroid. This is the antibiotic. This is the one that I can't take two hours. Like it has to be, I have to do it two hours before dairy or two hours after dairy. Um, so I have to wait till 11.30 to do this one. And then this is my labetalol, which is for my high blood pressure. So evening is not so bad. It's the day that's really bad and it's like super heavy on my stomach. Yeah, I don't know if y'all have any just advice on, you know, how to like uh, protect your stomach from all 
all of the medication and vitamins that I'm taking. If y'all, you know, happen to take as much as I'm taking and you have any tips or tricks, let me know because I did feel pretty sick this afternoon. Like right now I eat and I'm totally fine. So I know it's not the food. I know it was definitely everything that I took. So it made me sick enough to where I had to go to sleep so that I could try and get over my stomach ache. And it just, it just made me feel ill. I wanted to throw up. My stomach was hurting. It was just not fun. Yeah, any tips would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my vitamins and then basically turn in for the night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, guys. So it is 9.45, I think, or so, and I woke up at 9.30. I went to bed at 3.30, and one thing I will say is, like, when I'm on keto, I just get up early. I do. And I had set my alarm for 10.30 since I went to bed so late. Just woke up. 9 30 bright eyed and bushy tailed i decided to come down to have my morning coffee and then go walk my dogs and then get my day started yeah so so far feel good drinking my coffee not like super hungry generally if i'm hungry in the morning by the time i have my coffee with my heavy cream i'm good until like two or three although today i get to eat at 1 30 because i started my fast at 9 30 last night and the coffee doesn't break my fast so yeah i want to i think so like the first day that I got my keto my ketone strips I tested them just to you know for a barometer and I obviously had no trace at all so I'm gonna do that Saturday morning to see where I'm at I should be in ketosis I think I don't know I mean I've been in ketosis before and now I'm doing the butter fast so I should be in ketosis hopefully and then I'm also gonna you know check my weight because that's just for the beef and butter fast not for like keto in general so that's what's happening right now and that is it probably going to plan my menu for the next few days so that i can go and buy the necessary things for them uh so yeah i will check in with you guys later as i drink my coffee my favorite person is my dog or my dogs and today i'm only going to walk one mile cool beans i'll check in with you guys later hey guys so just checking in i'm about to have my first meal of the day it is 1 45 more ground beef and butter and i'm drinking it with a Lacroix and water okay i will check in with you guys after i'm done eating okay guys so lunch is done it's a lot of food like i'm doing well technically i'm doing because most people do like eight ounces and then eight and a half and i'm doing nine ounces and nine and a half because i had to make up for the difference of like my daily calories that i was intaking like before i went on this beef and fast diet and i was afraid that i was going to be one starving and then just eat whatever i wanted so i, I just added a, an extra ounce for lunch and an extra ounce and a half for dinner and i'm still not even at 1800 calories a day so i'm like between 1600 calories and then when i work out or when i go for my walks i'm like you know at 13 100 calories for the day but anyways it's good so i like didn't hate it like i'm not i know there have been some people who have done this and like i think alessa alessa salvatore did it for like three days and she was like over it but i'm not also i'm latina so i grew up eating a lot of ground beef like you know ground beef with ejotes green beans ground beef with like potatoes ground beef and tacos ground beef with beans ground beef with like the little like a shells like and bow ties like in a soup so like i ate ground beef a lot growing up as a kid so it's not I'm like, oh, okay. Like this just reminds me of like what my mom makes sometimes. So yeah, I'm not hating it. I, I'm, this is, has been super doable. It's my fourth day. Tomorrow will be my final day. So tomorrow, so today I just have dinner and then tomorrow I have lunch and dinner and then I'm done. Saturday I can, you know, go into regular keto. I'm still going to be intermittent fasting. Right now I'm doing the 16-8. So I'm still going to be doing the intermittent fasting, but now like I, I'm just going to be eating regular keto stuff. And I've already been planning out my menu. I actually have been planning out my menu because i love thai food and i love like korean food asian food any asian food i love so a lot of my menu for next week is from this cookbook called the asian keto low carb cookbook and if you don't follow her her name's she's under tippy tails here on youtube and just has a lot of really great recipes that i'm gonna try out and or i have already tried on and i'm just gonna eat them again during this week so i'm doing that and i'm also getting recipes from keto connect like their keto butter chicken which is 
delicious. And then I did like a few, I downloaded a few recipes from Downshiftology. Her avocado egg salad is amazing. And then a couple of recipes that I got from Pinterest. So I'm planning my menu right now. I've got Saturday through next Friday figured out. And that's when I'm gonna go grocery shop for on Saturday or Friday, Friday night or Saturday morning. So yeah, doing good guys. I'm gonna go back to doing what I'm doing today. And then I will check in with you guys when I go for my mile walk and for and eat my dinner. I'm actually gonna have Aiden with me today. So he's actually gonna go with me for a walk. Let's see if the little guy can keep up. It's only a mile, so I think he should be fine. But I'm picking him up today at 5.30. And then at some point when the sun starts going down, go for a walk and then come back, have dinner, give him dinner and then take him back to my mom's house. So yeah, I will check in with you guys then. And I'm back home, one mile down, took me 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna go in and eat dinner. Good morning guys. So today is Friday the 31st. It is my last day of the beef and butter fast. I was gonna say challenge, but it's not a challenge. I mean, it is, but also fast. I'm about to have my morning coffee and my Tigger mug. You can probably hear Pebbles in the background. She's eating her breakfast. Bam Bam's not yet decided to join us, but he will eat his breakfast soon. And yeah, I will check in with you guys during lunch. Oh, and I feel good. Again, when I'm on keto, I just like wake up. Like last night, I think I went to bed like at 2.30 and I set my alarm for like 10.30 to give myself eight hours. And I just like rolled out of bed at nine. And that just, oh, that's one of the things that happens with keto that I actually really like that. I don't like just like, you know, wake up super late and my body just naturally wakes me up. So um, yeah, okay, I'll check in with you later. Okay. Ignore my hair. So I'm eating my next bowl of beef and butter. I think it needs a little salt. I didn't put a lot of salt in last time. So to do that, I'm feeling a little funky dunky because I took some of my vitamins on sort of an empty stomach. Like I had coffee with creamer and then I waited two hours and then I had some of the pills. I'm still missing three, but I feel like, ugh, I feel yucky. I feel really gross. I feel like I need to throw up. So I'm hoping that the food will help me with that sickness because I feel lightheaded and just yucky. I feel yucky and I have stuff to do, so I can't feel yucky. But anyways, I'm gonna finish this up and then I will check in with you guys in a little while. Rain or shine, guys. It's about to storm at 90 p.m. 90% chance of rain, but we're doing it. We have our rain jackets. It's fine. We got this. Jeanette. <laughs> okay, so we're still doing it, guys. We're a mile in. There's a lot of lightning. Probably not the smartest thing that we've ever done, but rain or shine. Rain or shine. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay. Time 20 minutes 52 seconds. Distance one mile. Pace. I did it. Sunny and uh, there's a lot of lightning, so I'm going in, but I did it. Three miles. Okay, so I just did a ketone uh, test strip, and this is what the measurements are. These are the colors of the trace amounts, and this is where I'm at. So I think I have the larger amount of trace of ketones, which is at a 1.6 or is it 16? Yep. I thought it was that one, but I think it's this one. So that's where I'm at. So I'm definitely in ketosis, guys. Yay. Awesome. Okay guys, so here are the results of five days on the beef and butter fast. I went down from 208.6 to 202.4. I'm so excited. It's six pounds that I've lost plus 1.3% of body fat and then one point on my BMI. So I feel really good. And if you look at all of my numbers, they look so much better than they did before. The six pounds, a lot of it is probably water weight, but I'm thinking that at least two solid pounds of actual weight loss happen, which is what the minimum is. It's between one to two pounds per week for you to do it in a healthy manner. So yeah, I mean, like just look at those numbers. I'm gonna try and see if I can do a side-by-side -side picture at the end of this. I'll insert it so that you can see the numbers from Monday, July 27th to the numbers that I'm seeing on Saturday, August 1st. Hey guys, so as promised, here are the side-by-side 
picture so that you can see the difference that five days made. Hey guys, and I am back. So today is officially the first day of my regular keto journey, but also the end of my beef and butter fast. That actually ended last night, but I was gonna update you this morning because I wanted to weigh myself. I wanted to take my ketone levels and you know, just in general have more of a sit down as opposed to like something like a really quick thing. So I don't think I actually properly explained what a beef and butter fast was. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now in case any of you guys are interested. Now I'm not a doctor so before you do any of the things that I'm trying out or anyone else is trying out always ask your doctor you know because everybody's body is different for me it was easier to do this because I've already done keto before so it's not like it was completely unfamiliar to me so a beef and butter fast is basically a simple way of eating a very basic combo of protein and fat and it helps to reset a stall in ketosis or it helps to jumpstart your ketosis doses. So that's basically what it is for those of you wondering. Now, I started my beef and butter fast on Monday, July the 27th. My starting weight was 208.6. Now, as of this morning, when I weighed myself after the five days of doing this, I was at 202.4. So I lost over six pounds. Now, a bunch of it is probably water weight because they always say like when you, you know, first start losing in any diet, but also in keto, a bunch of it is water weight. So I'm assuming like maybe five pounds of it is water weight and then like a pound is like a real pound. So from Monday, July 27th to Friday, July 31st, that's what I lost. I lost six pounds. I feel really good. It wasn't that hard, honestly. Like I thought it was going to be harder than it was, but it wasn't really like it, you know, it didn't become monotonous to me. Now, again, I did mention in one of my vlogs that I was doing earlier in the week that I did grow up eating a lot of ground beef. You know, I'm Latina, so we did like a mixture of things like, you know, like carne picada with ejote, carne picada with papa, carne picada, you know, with angel hair pasta, but I forgot what you call it in Spanish. But anyways, so it's to, basically carne picada is ground beef. And so it was just a different combination of things with like, you know, green beans, with the angel hair pasta, with potatoes. So we always did a mixture of that. So it wasn't anything that I got sick of because I just grew up eating that anyway. So it's really, really, easy. Now, the way that I measured out what I was going to eat is I just went and did a bunch of research about what, what people were eating, how much they were eating, and then I went and did my macros. I went online and took like my, I used a macro calculator to see how much I need to consume per day in order to lose weight at my current height and age and, you know, and how much I currently weigh. So based off of that, I ended up deducing that I had to consume 1800 calories a day in order to lose weight. And then so from there, that's what I did. So when I was measuring out how much I was going to eat per meal, I did it based off of those numbers. So yes, it does take a lot of like math and a lot of research in order to do it, you know, to do it right. So I basically was only eating two meals a day because I'm also along with this beef and butter fast, I was doing intermittent fasting. So I was doing the 16-8, meaning that I fast for 16 hours and then I eat for eight hours. Hours. And those 16 hours, part of those 16 hours are included while you sleep, obviously. And then, you know, you just eat from a, a window of eight hours. That's when you eat. And then, you know, you, then you stop and then you don't eat until the next day. It's fairly newish to me. Like I've done it on and off just like organically and intuitively, but now I'm really focused on it. And I actually have this app called Zero app, which monitors your time of fasting because there's several different types of, of fast that you can do. You can do the 16-8. I believe you could do the OMAD, which is the one where you just have one meal a day. So like for one hour a day you eat and then you you fast. And I think that's the one where people see the most results. I'm trying to build up to that because organically keto leads to that. It leads to you only having one meal a day. So then you basically are doing keto with OMAD and that's when I know that people are drastically seeing results. And you're not hungry. You're not, you know, you're satiated because you're eating a very high fat, moderate protein low carb diet. So now the other thing that I did do is that I took my ketone levels with the ketone strips from Keto Perfect Keto. And the first day I was at, at negative. So if you can see that I was right here. 
so I was at, I started right here because I took that on the first day and obviously because I hadn't had keto in a while. Now today, this morning, as you saw in my little vlog thingy that I did, I'm here. So within five days, I was able to get to this, which is amazing. So that means that I'm now officially in ketosis. So, you know, just, I'm just gonna start eating keto stuff, like very, very, very keto-like stuff. Like I've already have a menu set out for myself for this week so I can set myself up for success. Because one of the things that I noticed when I've done keto previously, well, I can do it for like a month or two, it does become monotonous because I'm not diversifying my food. I'm just kind of eating the same things, the things that I know that work and then it just becomes just ugh, like I'm over it you know so I've set up like a whole like menu for the week just to get me jumpstart in just to get to know different recipes so that those can be alternated in with the stuff that I already know how to do I also don't do like super hardcore straight keto because I'm not cooking every day and sometimes we're up and about you know like we'll go do something especially like on Sundays like we take Aiden uh, and uh, <laughs> let me just Aiden for those of you who were at asking Aiden is not my son I, Aiden is my nephew so that's why I take him like you know one to two afternoons during the week and then on Sundays some people were asking like uh, if he was my son and why I only get to see him on Sundays so he's not my son my nephew but so on Sundays we do go out with him and we generally have him between six to eight hours during that day so we do go and eat things that he likes to eat so I sometimes have to do what they call dirty keto. So like if we go to Chipotle, I know that I'm gonna get the salad with the beef and you know, I know what to add in there. You know, just don't add the corn, don't add beans, don't add rice, but it's just basically like the, the salad, the fajitas, like a little bit of fajitas, not too much actually. The beef, a sour cream, avocado, and some salsas, cause I love salsas, and then lime for the actual dressing. Now, like let's say if I go to Pollo Loco, at Pollo Loco, I do the double chicken avocado salad Salad. I just don't get the dressing. Instead of that, I end up getting the guacamole salsa, which is two net carbs per serving. So that's what I do with my uh, double chicken avocado. They also have keto tacos now, and I believe they're five net carbs each. So if I'm like really in a pinch and I don't want to have the salad, I can have the keto tacos. Also, you always have the opportunity to get salads at a Jack in the Box, at Wendy's, or at McDonald's. My favorite one is the chicken, I think, Cobb salad at Jack in the Box because they do like a whole fillet of chicken and it has like you know like all of like the the um the cheese it has a ton of cheese a ton of bacon and stuff like that and then i use a little bit of their dressing i think it's the blue cheese dressing but you know just always check your carb content i just do that and you know and the, the blue cheese one is not bad at all so that's how i sort of keep up with like when i have to eat out and not eating at home i also have a bunch of keto cookbooks i have one that that i really really love that's by she goes by Tippy Tails on YouTube. Her and her sister did this uh, Asian low carb uh, keto cookbook and I get a lot of my recipes from there because I love Asian food. Love, love, love. I can eat Thai food every single day. Vietnamese, you name it. Chinese, <laughs> Japanese, you name it. I will eat it. I love it so much. I also follow Keto Connect and I am on their platform called I think The Curve. It's like an online platform that they created for other people who are doing keto people who follow them on their keto connect channel here on YouTube so I followed them and I've gotten a bunch of recipes from them my favorite one and I think you've heard me mention it this week is the keto butter chicken so so yummy but they have so many other recipes so that's what I'm gonna be doing in order to keep myself on this whole journey because I really really wanted to be a lifestyle change and a like a just a health change period you know I've been going back and forth you know like i i've just yo-yoed and like always trying to like you know do this and then i you know i stop and then i gain the weight back and stuff you know like at one point when i did keto was it last year i went down you know from 214 to 191 and then i was just like whoa look i did that i'm gonna take a little break and then i just gained all my weight back within you know like six or seven months so trying to stay on it obviously take a break when i need to but go right back to it when you know like just just go right back to it like not not like a break but like maybe allow myself a cheat date and then go right back to it not take like two weeks i'm gonna try not to put too much pressure but definitely trying to follow this as best as i can organically for myself intuitively for myself i'm not doing keto for anybody else so all of you guys out there 
that, you know, like the keto police do not come after me because I'm just, my journey is my journey and it's different from everybody else's. But yeah, so that's, that's basically what I'm doing. So I just wanted to give you the update on that, on the beef and butter fast. It was super easy, knocked me into ketosis pretty quickly. And yeah, I totally, I recommend it. Like it's two thumbs up, seriously. Not bad, easy. Didn't have to even think about what I was having for food because I already knew what I was having. Oh, and I, I didn't tell you how much I was eating. So based on my macros, I was the 1800 calories. So basically in the morning I was having coffee with two tablespoons of heavy cream. And then once I could break my fast, I would eat lunch. And for lunch, I was having nine ounces of ground beef and it was made with butter. And I added some onions and garlic and, you know, stuff to make it taste good. And then for dinner, I would have nine and a half ounces of ground beef. And that would still not get me to 1800 calories. I was eating more like 1600 calories. On two of the days, I actually added another coffee with heavy cream in order to like up my fat and just get some more calories in me. So, and even so, I was still not meeting the 1800 calories. I was still well below 1800 calories. I think I was more between 16 to 1700 calories. And then I was also walking. Like I've tried, I started walking with my sister. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're walking three miles a day. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, we're doing one mile a day because it's sort of like our rest day but we're still like getting in a walk and then Sundays we rest so that could bring us to a total of 15 miles a day and uh, we're both just super hyper focused on it because for her and this is my younger sister Jeanette not Jenny who got Stephen Johnson's but Jeanette the younger one uh, you'll see her actually you'll see her in this video so for her she's a type 1 diabetic so she's on insulin and she has high blood pressure and she's 30 like 32. So it's really important for her to lose some weight. And actually it's not type one, it's type two. So it is reversible. So if she starts losing that weight, she could be off of insulin. And for me, I have high blood pressure and I'm pre-diabetic. So I don't want to end up getting on insulin like her and my mom. So that's why it's very important that I'm like focused and I do this. It's really, really important. It's not just, I mean, yes, part of it is vanity. Of course, you know, a lot of people do end up losing weight because there's vanity involved and I'm not going to say that it's any different for me but the main reason is I don't want to be on insulin and I would like to be off of my high blood pressure medication. Three, I just want to feel healthy and not feel like out of breath and like I can't do anything. I can't tie my shoelaces. You know that I'm heavily breathing just like with any like m just random like daily movement. And four, you know, I would like to have a baby at some point and getting my body healthy and ready for that is probably the best way to go, especially since I'm older and it's harder for, you know, someone at my age. So yeah, anyways, that is it. This is the closing for the beef and butter fast. I will be uh, keeping a vlog and it will include some of this stuff in there for my first 30 days of keto to see how much, you know, I end up losing by the end of the first 30 days. So you'll see a couple of the things from in, from this particular video in that. But yeah, you guys, that's it. So thanks so much for watching. And as always, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so now and then ring my bell so you can stay updated on everything that I have coming up. And then please like and comment on this video. I'll see y'all next time.